Okay, here we go. Now we are starting in on the ripped sleeves of Gary's t-shirt here, and you can see the reference in the corner. It's a little different than what I'm doing here. It's much more triangular, and I've got almost kind of like flamey things going, because um, I was winging on how to do this. I wasn't really sure how I was going to make this look like ripped fabric, and what I came up with is kind of stylized, but I think it works, you know, and... Um, Basically, I'm doing what you see here. I'm uh, just pulling out, some, you know, extruding some vertices, doing a loop cut, pulling it to a point, and then just moving and shoving and twisting and turning them or vertices around until they fall into line. Um, that's what a lot of this stuff is. Just doing things the hard way. Um, but I really think it worked. I kind of like the contrast of the the stylized rippy things compared to the you know smooth sculptured a little more realistic version of the rest of his body i think it kind of works well um and you know this is just the way you do it oh here you go i'm starting to work on the other arm boolean that together and now I'm just going to put a little of musculature in, right? Um, I guess I jump around a lot, don't I? Well, you know, you you got to keep an eye on the entire model because it's so easy to miss stuff. And while you're moving and turning things around to do one thing, you notice something else is off. So you got to tweak it and fix it before you can get back to work on the other thing. Because there's so much that you got to do. And I try hard to catch everything before I go to print, right? Because making 500 versions of a printed model is a pain in the butt. So I do my best to catch everything on the outset before I even turn it into an STL, right? When everything's still edible and movable and easy to fix. The goal is to have no revisions. Doesn't always work that way, but that's the goal. All right, let's see. Oh, here you go. I joined the arm to the to the body, and now I'm just smoothing out that joint between his shoulder and his rib cage. Oh, I think I tried to. I was gonna try and copy one side, move it to the other, but it just doesn't always work. So here's this is how I started it. You just put a cube in the top, and then you just wrap it around his shoulder. Right, and then I'll connect them. And you got to do a lot of moving and a lot of tweaking because you got to make sure that it matches the anatomy. Otherwise, it's not going to look right. Right? That's the tricky part. Anybody can just wrap it around, but you got to know your anatomy and you got to know how it changes, you know, clothes and cloth and, and textures so that, so that it looks like it belongs there. I really believe that most of what I do is sort of like creating an illusion. And for the illusion to work, everything's got to support that illusion. If something doesn't, then it kind of falls apart, you know, and it doesn't work. Um, and here you go, I'm working on the rips on the other arm. Just moving and tugging and pulling everything down so that it's thick enough so that it stands above the arm and you also want it to sink into it enough so that when I boolean everything together it joins but you want it all to be at a consistent height you want it to be thick enough so that it looks different from the body you know it stands above it but not so high that it looks weird because this is supposed to be like a t-shirt if the t-shirt was three inches thick your illusion's going to fall apart because that's not how thick t-shirts are. That's not how it works. And you got to think about all of these little details, all of these little supporting aspects that, that help create the, the illusion. You know? And I tried not to be too uniform with these rips. I tried to put a little variations in there, some going one way, some going the other way, so that it didn't, you know, um, look fake. 
And also, here's the thing. I wanted to put a little more dimension in them, but, you know, you can see I have that one just sort of hanging down, and I like that, and I wanted to do more, but that actually makes it harder to print, right? That needed support because it wasn't really touching the model in the same way. The other ones probably could get away without support, but that one's hanging down. So it's going to start in midair and it'll need support. And I try to keep this in mind while modeling. Um, sometimes you got to do it anyway to make the model work. But I try to make things as easily printable as possible. Okay, here I'm working on it a little shorts on the bottom of his overalls. And I this could have been a little more prominent. It works as it is, but I wish it would have stuck out from his leg a little more. I should have done it a little bit thicker. And that is a problem I always have because things look can look right on screen, but you have nothing to really judge what you're doing, right? There's no um, you know, this could be an eighth of an inch thick, or it could be like a 32nd of an inch thick. It's really hard to tell. And occasionally you'll see me, I'll put a, I'll put a cube in there and I'll bring it to the height of whatever it is I'm trying to measure. Right. I'll see how thick it is because I want it. I want it to look correct, right? We got to support that illusion. Um, so you always got to check yourself before you rickety wreck yourself. <laughs> yeah, that was bad. Sorry. <laughs> so, uh, I'm just doing more tweaking. A lot of times while I'm moving the model around to work on something, I'll see something else that needs to be fixed. And, um, if I don't do it when I see it, I'll forget. So, uh, I, I, I wind up bouncing around the model a lot sometimes. Here's the shoulder strap. Um, for his overalls. And you have to make it conform to the body. Not just go around it in a perfect U, because that wouldn't look right. But it's also got to look like it's got weight on it. It's also got to look like it's supporting the front and, and the back. And it's going over his shoulder. And it's, it's, you know, going with the anatomy. Otherwise it falls apart. So you got to keep an eye on functional and that illusion you're trying to create, right? It's, it's, it's a strap for overall, so it's got to be functional for what it's supposed to do, but it's also got to look like that's what it's doing. So all this stuff you got to keep in mind. And if you need some reference, hit Google. There's tons of reference. Not like when I first went to art school, there was no Google. <laughs> yes, I am ancient. So now I've got all the reference I could ever want right at my fingertips. So, you know, look stuff up if you need it. Don't, you know, use reference. Okay, more tweaks, more tweaks, always more tweaks, a million tweaks. You know, a lot of times like this strap here, I just want to get both ends over over the shoulder, you know, around the body. And then we'll tweak it and move it and fix it so that it looks like it's doing what it's supposed to. And other times, you know, you do it another way. You got to do how it works at the moment sometimes. There you go, getting that baby in shape. I like to put in little details like that clip. I could have left that out. I mean, it was clearly there in the reference. But, you know, I could have left that out. And would anybody really notice? But I like putting that stuff in. You know, that little stupid stuff. And here I start to work on the belt. And I think we're coming about to the end of this video soon. Yep. We'll get more of the belt next time. So, if I helped you out at all, please don't forget to... Subscribe, like, comment, ring the bell, all that good stuff. I'll see you for the next one.